A changing world. The big question: How are our lives today affected by things people created or invented during the Middle Ages? The Middle Ages lasted for more than a thousand years. Wars occurred, kings and queens ruled, and a deadly disease killed one third of the population of Europe. People lived their lives. Seasons came and went, and history was made. Those days are long gone, but the people who lived long ago. Have touched our lives. Many ideas, laws, inventions, and important decisions made in the Middle Ages still affect our lives today. Certain key events helped define the Middle Ages. You have already heard about many of them. The Hundred Years' War is another. This war began when one man claimed to be the true king of another land. This time, it was the English king Edward the Third, the great great grandson of King John. He claimed to be the rightful king of France. The Hundred Years' War was not one war, but rather a series of military encounters. That began in 1337 and ended in 1453 C.E. Between the battles and sieges were truces and negotiations and periods of peace. Seen from the Hundred Years' War, when the war began, France was probably the most powerful kingdom in Europe. People did not expect this war to last long. The English, however, made good use of their skillful archers. Many of these archers used long bows. This powerful weapon helped the English archers defeat the French knights on the battlefields of France. One good example was the famous Battle of Agincourt. On October twenty fifth, fourteen fifteen C.E., a mighty French army faced a much smaller English army. The English archers, with their long bows, could not be overpowered by the French soldiers. Although this was indeed a great victory for the English, France won the war in the end. They held on to almost all of the lands that the English had hoped to control. Out of wars such as this one, a stronger sense of nationalism developed. People fought and died for their king and for the land they belonged to. The outcome of the Hundred Years' War was that France held on to a great deal of land. Joan of Arc, France won the Hundred Years' War. This might not have happened if it had not been for the bravery of a young girl. Her name was Joan of Arc, and this is her story. Joan was born into a peasant family in eastern France. In 1412 C.E., she lived a simple life. She did not go to school and never learned to read or write. During her childhood, the Hundred Years' War was raging. The mighty French army had not been able to defeat the English. The war caused hardship and poverty in France. When Joan was thirteen years old, she began to have visions and to hear voices. Joan believed that God was speaking to her. These experiences continued for several years. When Joan was seventeen years old, the English burned her village of Domremy. Joan heard the voices again. This time, she believed that God was telling her 
to lead the soldiers of France to victory against the English. Portrait of Joan of Arc from the 1400s. Joan riding into battle. Joan traveled to a nearby town. There she told the governor of the town that she had a message for the Dauphin. The Dauphin was next in line to the French throne. Incredibly, the governor agreed to allow Joan to speak to the Dauphin. Joan convinced the Dauphin to give her a sword, a horse, and some soldiers. She was able to free the town of Orleans from English control and helped to ensure that the Dauphin was crowned King Charles VII. But in another battle, Joan was captured by the English. She was accused of being a heretic and was found guilty in a trial. As a punishment, she was put to death. Joan of Arc entering town of Orleans. Joan was captured by the English army. The Black Death. Some historians have concluded that traitors who had been trading in the Middle East brought the plague to Europe. This first outbreak in the 600s was the most terrible of all. It is estimated that at least one-third of the population of Europe died during this outbreak. The plague existed throughout much of Europe, but it arrived in England in 1348 CE. This terrible disease created a sense of terror. It spread throughout England and eventually made its way into Wales, Scotland, and Ireland. Carried by infected fleas that lived on rodents, it spread quickly through the dirty towns and cities. It affected every level of society. Nobles, as well as serfs, were struck down by this terrible disease. The plague returned at least eight times in the 1300s, and another 14 times in the 1400s. Spread of the Black Death The following account of the plague was written down by a man named Henry Knighton. Henry Knighton was a canon, or member of the church, in Leicester, England. This is what he said in 1348 CE. The dreadful pestilence penetrated the sea coast by Southampton and came to Bristol, and there almost the whole population of the town perished, as if it had been seized by sudden death. For few kept their beds more than two or three days, or even half a day. Then this cruel death spread everywhere around, following the course of the sun. And there died at Leicester, in the small parish of San Leonard, more than 380 persons, in the parish of Holy Cross, 400, in the parish of St. Margaret's, Leicester, 700, and so in every parish a great multitude. All kinds of changes. People fought wars differently by the end of the Middle Ages, than they had earlier. Cannons and firearms changed what happened on the battlefields of Europe. Skilled archers and mounted knights were no match for such devastating weapons. The machinery of war was changing and becoming even more deadly. Cannons used during the siege of Orleans Another significant occurrence in the Middle Ages was the growth of towns and cities. This development transformed European society. As more and more people moved from the countryside to seek employment elsewhere, the Lord's role changed. Over time, townspeople were no longer subject to his authority. 
the ties of feudalism began to unravel. In addition, exploration and trade opened people's eyes to other places, ideas, and cultures. The invention of the compass and a navigational tool called the astrolabe enabled sailors to embark on even more daring voyages. The invention of the printing press in 1450 CE, without a doubt, transformed European society. The ability to produce books, pamphlets, and newspapers helped to spread knowledge and new ideas. Books, once a luxury, gradually became more affordable. The desire and need to know how to read and write grew among different social groups. An astrolabe from the 1400s, printing press from 1498 CE. Medieval Musings. Number one, many people in the Middle Ages believed that something that one of your senses could detect caused the plague and other diseases. What was it? Medieval illustration of priest blessing victims of disease.